I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the shell. And for those of you who don't know, who have never used the shell or terminal before, this will probably be one of the most important videos you ever see, or at least for computers. Uh, because what the, uh, what the shell does, or what most people call the terminal, is it lets you, it lets you navigate and run commands arbitrarily to do things, I would say just do everything more efficiently. Like I do all my work in the terminal um, and everything in, in a shell. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy how efficient it is. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a window. So this right here is your command prompt. Um, there is a different. There is a difference, of course, between what I call the terminal, the command prompt, and the shell. I might, I might make a video on that. But um, for now, this is uh, this is where you um, put in on your commands, all that. Um, not only that, but it also acts as sort of a um, file, a file viewer, or file explorer, um, because this is you're able to edit and manipulate all your files just from here. So it's kind of a end all be all program to to use even though the shell is just you know is uses other programs as well but we'll get into that so first things first you'll notice this little prompt um, we can type in whatever commands we want so I'm gonna go ahead and just find out um, where I am in my system so I can print PWD for print working directory and that'll tell me where I am so I'm in the home folder and I'm in the and I'm in Bryce and you can actually abbreviate that for this tilde right here. This tilde actually just means your user's home directory. So I'm user Bryce, and this is my home directory, and so therefore it's a tilde. So that's very nice. Um, let's actually get into like viewing files, manipulating files. Um, but before I do that, one thing I should say is the the most important command. I actually made a video on this. Um, I think like a couple months ago. Uh, the most important command you can ever know when using the terminal is man. And what man is, is it'll bring up uh, something called a man page, or what most people call a manual. And you can actually run man man, just to show an example. Um, this will bring up a sort of summary of the command and all the arguments, everything for a specific command, all the information you'd probably ever need. Um, if you're ever stuck with a command or you don't know a command, you just run man and then the and then whatever command you want and it'll give you just that. So that's pretty good. Um, so the first command that we want, or that I said the most important command uh, for um, navigating around is ls and that will just list all the files and directories uh, in your current folder. So we're listing, um, we're listing all the files in slash home slash Bryce or tilde for this for this um, particular folder um, so that's, <laughs> here's all of our own folder uh, all of our uh, folders and this one file right here so another thing we can do is let's just say you have um, filled up your you know filled up your screen with a bunch of text and you want to get rid of it one way you can do that is you can press control L and it'll clear clear your uh, terminal display. Uh, this doesn't work on certain shells. For example, um, if you run if you run this command, which I'll explain in a moment, um, if you run this command, it'll actually tell you what uh, what shell you're running. And most people, if you're running a Linux system, you're probably running Bash. I run ZSH, which I might I might change in the future. But if you run Bash or ZSH or I think there's a few other shells that support it. Pressing Control L will clear your screen, but for some shells that won't work at all. Instead, you can just run you can run the command clear, and no matter what, it'll clear your screen. So that's good. That's another um, very important command. Um, so let's go back to actually listing the file or listing our, our files. So what we can do is, um, as you can see, all of these. Um, the files in blue are actually directories, and this purple one is a video file. Um, so let's just say I want to go into my desktop directory. The way you actually move into a directory is you use the cd command, which stands for change directory. So I want to change directory into 
desktop. And so I'll be in my desktop directory. And of course there's nothing in it because I don't have anything in my desktop directory. And if I do PWD, you'll see now, instead of being in just home slash Bryce, I'm in desktop. And that'll actually show right here. You'll see it, it'll say tilde, tilde slash desktop. So that's pretty nice. Um, of course, if you want, if I want to go back to my home directory, I can just run CD. And instead of doing CD slash home slash Bryce, I can totally do that and it'll bring me back. But if I run CD dot dot, uh, but dot dot is just an abbreviation for the previous directory on the hierarchy. So if I just run that, it'll just bring me back to my home directory. So that's a very nice alias um, to have. Or I could also run uh, CD. And if you run CD with no arguments whatsoever, it will always bring you back to your home directory no matter what. So I can go to CD drive videos. Let's do my videos. And if I run CD dot dot, that'll just bring me back one directory. But if I do CD, that'll bring me back right back to my home, home directory. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, there's another, ooh, uh, another command, uh, ls, uh, with the a argument. This will actually, because ls just will list all your visible files. But what ls dot a will do is it will list all of the hidden files as well. Because in Unix systems and Linux, um, there are hidden files. I mean, Windows does ha Windows does have hidden, fi hidden files as well, but they um, they have a different uh, sort of scheme to it. Uh, Linux and Unix systems, uh, in order to make a file hidden, you have to pre uh, prepend it or um, prefix it with a dot, and so hence the name dot files you'll hear sometimes. But any file that starts with a, with a dot or a period will automatically be hidden and can only be shown with the L, with the A option when, when listing um, files. And so, of course, I have all these hidden files that I don't like being seen, um, especially things like config files, cache files, um, a bunch of other things. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen. So if you can run ls.a, that will list that. You can also run ls. L and that will actually list detailed information of all your files. And you can actually combine these arguments. So I can run ls.la and that will not only list all my hidden files, but also list more detailed description of the files, including things like the size, the date they were made and modified, um, permissions, and everything in between. So that's some interesting information to have. Um, so we covered moving directories, listing directories, printing directories. Um, now we're actually going to go into making files. So let's just say I want to make just a simple, just a simple file. I can use the touch command, and touch will just create a file. So if I give it, if I give it the argument file, you'll see that it'll create a file called file. Nothing you know too fancy about it. Um, that's how you that's how you create a file without putting any contents into it. Um, and if we and of course if I open this in the editor, there's nothing in it. So uh, in order to get rid of a file, what I would do is I would run rm, which stands for remove, and file, and that will go ahead and just remove the file. So another thing you can do is you can also um, you can also make directories as well. So in order to do that, you run the command mkdir and the name of the directory you want to make. So for example, let's just let's just make a directory called example. And this will make a directory right here called example. And we just go ahead and cd into that and do a few other things. And of course, that's an, of course that's our directory right now. Um, and if we want to, um, of course, remove a directory. Um, if a directory is empty, you can just uh, run remove directory and give an example. And it will just go ahead and remove it. No questions asked. Um, but if we actually have a directory with contents in it, there's something interesting. 
it's something interesting will happen. So if I make a directory called example again, so we have example. Uh, if we try removing with the rm command, you'll see that rm does not remove directories. Hence, hence the need for rm dr or remove directory, which makes sense, of course. But let's go into example, and let's just create a bunch of files. So I'm gonna create a file called one, two, three, four, or uh, four separate files called one, two, three, four. And so we have four separate files named one, two, three, and four. So if I go ahead and if I go ahead and run rm dir on example, it won't delete it. Now you may be uh, asking to asking yourself, well then how do I mo remove a directory um, without you know uh, without having to go inside the directory and tediously remove every single file? Because you can have directories inside directories with files and files and files inside of them, and that would take forever to delete. But luckily there's a little hack for that. Not not a hack, but sort of a Sort of something that's been included on purpose, I guess, but uh, something that may not be so obvious. So if you actually go to the man page for remove, you'll see um, that, that's that's an important thing too. Man pages are your, still your best friend. Um, one thing you'll find out is there's an R option, which stands for recursive. And basically what that will do is that will not only delete the file you want to delete, but or delete the, the directory you want to delete, also recursively to re delete all the other directories inside of it, which is what we want. So, or in this case, files. So I can run rm r and on an example. And as you can see, it will go ahead and delete our example directory with all the files inside of it. And of course, this is something you want to be careful of because one wrong command, if I run rm r on, you know, my documents folder. That's not going to end well. But so treat the treat that command uh, very conservatively because it can really wreak havoc on your system. Especially, um, especially this command. Do not run this command. Um, this will uh, uh, delete your entire root directory and wipe wipe your system. So I would not recommend running that. But so that's how do you remove um, directories and files? Uh, let's go ahead and actually figure out how to move and copy files. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a directory. I'm going to make another directory. I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, uh, dir. And let's cd into that. And let's create a file called text. And let's create another one called um, example. So now we have two files in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually put some text inside of text. Um, this is text. Okay, so now we have the two files. Um, one has text, one doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and move text to a different directory. And you can do that with the mv command. And I'm going to go ahead and move text to my home directory, which is tilde. And of course, it'll go ahead and move it. So if I go back, you'll see that text is there. And if I Print the contents of the file with cat, you'll see this is text. Also, another side note, the cat command, which is short for concatenate, it's a mouthful, I know, um, will go ahead and just spit out all the contents of your file as is. And so in this case, we're catting text and we have text. So let's actually go ahead and remove that. So we can go ahead and remove files, or not remove files, um, move files. Um, you can also copy files. So for example, I go to my example file. I'm just going to say this is an example. So I can go ahead and copy that. And let's copy example. And let's call it, I don't know, um, file. So now we have two files. Uh, one is actually a copy of the other. And if we cap both of them, you'll see they have the same exact contents. So that's nice. Um, we can also, um, so copy uh, copy will, cop, will of course copy the file and allows you to actually, um, you know, move files and give them different names. But you can also rename a file by using move. So let's just say I want to rename 
uh, example to something else. I can run move and example, and I can tell it I want to rename example to um, video file. Now example is renamed to video file. So you're able to use these command, uh, these the copying move commands to actually rename files in these uh, interesting ways. So that's nice. Um, so we've gone ahead and edited all these files and done these, done these different things. Um, what if I want to move or copy a bunch of files at once? So for example, if I'm going to go ahead and remove these, um, video file, file. So I'm going to create a bunch of files. Um, let's do one dot text, two dot text, three dot text, and four dot um, RTF. How about that? So I have these four different files. And let's just say I want to remove all my TXT files and just keep the RTF files. What I can do is I can run rm to remove the files. And instead of typing, instead of typing one, two, three dot text, I can just I can just do the star symbol. And what the star symbol represents is it'll actually match a pattern. So for example, if I run if I just run star, it'll match all the files in the current directory and delete them all. But if I want to do, delete just the text files, I can do star dot txt, and this will say, hey, match all the files that end in txt. And if I run that, you'll see that all we have is our RTF file. So that's a very interesting thing uh, to, uh, to you know remember because this it lets you, it allows you to bulk uh, bulk remove files, bulk copy, um, bulk move or move bunch of files at once, and it's a very nice way to just speed things up instead of having to like um, do it one by one. Uh, and all this, all this is definitely way faster than a graphical file manager, without a doubt. And so that's really nice. Um, another command that I probably want to bring up is the echo command. And what the echo command will do, it will, it will just echo, you know, whatever you give it. So if I say test, it'll just go ahead and echo it. Uh, you've seen me use this in a few videos in the past. Um, it's a very, very simple command. But it's also able to echo variables, which is one thing I, <laughs> one thing I'm going to show you right now is um, your shell actually has, supports creating variables. So for example, when I ran, earlier when I ran echo dollar sign shell, what this is, is any, anything and starting with a dollar sign is actually a variable. And so in this case, we have the shell variable, which in this case is set to ZS, slash bin slash ZSH, which is our shell. Or if you're running bash, it's slash bin slash bash or any other shell you're running. Um, but we can make variables. And let's just say, I'll, I'll have an example one. Let's do var. And it's all you need is just um, a variable name and then the equal sign and then whatever value you want, give it. In this case, let's say hello. hello. And so now we have a variable called hello. And if we echo it, we will get hello. And so that's <laughs> that's the basics of uh, shell variables. There's also other variables that are built into your system or that are automatic. For example, the path variable is the path to all your executable files. Um, yours may not look like mine, but or exactly like mine, but it should look um, about the same. And there's a bunch of other variables that you can use and for different things, but you can use man pages to look that up. <laughs> um, another very important uh, command I would say is sleep. Or maybe not very important, but it might be useful. And sleep uh, will sleep, let's just say I give it the argument of two. It will sleep for two seconds and then quit. And there we go. That's all that sleep does. Uh, but you can, of course, chain that with other commands to do certain things. But one thing I should bring up is if you run, let's just say I run, let's just say I accidentally run um, sleep 100. 
Oh no, oh no, I messed up. Um, what do I do? Do I have to wait 100 seconds or close up my terminal and open it up again? Because that would really be a pain. But what you can do is most shells support exiting out of um, commands that are running. And to do that, you can just press Control C, and it'll just go ahead and escape out of the current command that you're running uh, every time. So I can just run that. And so I don't have to um, wait 100 seconds every time I run that command. So that's good. Uh, or if I mess up and do run a command I wasn't supposed to, I can just quickly press Control C, and it'll go ahead and cancel the command. Um, there's also, oh, there's also a very uh, important, uh, very important, um, maybe not super important, but a very useful feature that you can do. You can create aliases. And when an alias is, is an alias will basically let you disguise or alias a command as another command. For example, I have um, in, let me go back here. I'm going to go back to my home directory and delete uh, this directory because we don't need it anymore. But if I open config, um, you'll see I actually have some aliases over here. Um, and, these, these just, and these are just some examples of aliases. But let's just say I want to create an alias for um, rm r. Um, I can do alias. Oh. And I can do rr and set that equal to rm r. And so now, every time I run rr, it will, of course, you know, run that command. But we need a directory. So let's make a directory. Oh. Uh, OK. And let's go ahead and rr. OK. And it'll go ahead and recursively delete it. So that's nice. Um, so being able to create alias is a very um, very great way to customize um, customize and extend what's uh, how you use your uh, command prompter shell. And I think that's uh, I think that's everything. I'm pretty sure there's probably a few things I'm missing. Uh, oh yes, um, one other thing that's important is um, the that I should probably touch up on is the and and operator. Um, what this does is let's just say I have uh, let's just say I want to chain two commands together. Like, for example, sleep five. So this will sleep for five seconds. Um, of course, I'm not going to run that all the way. And oh, and let's and echo done. So we have these two commands. We're if we want to chain them together, what we can do is I can run and 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 add this. So what this will do is this will run sleep five or sleep five, which will sleep for five seconds, and then once that's done, it will go ahead and echo an echo done into the terminal, and I mean that's basically it. Of course, you can chain more of these together, but I'll go ahead and run that. And so this is a very nice way to or, uh, to chain commands together and get them to work nicely with each other. So I think that's I think that's everything um, that I've been meaning to cover. Um, I think yes. Oh, one other important important thing is um, if you run ls a, there's a there's two dots right here which represents the previous directory, but there's also a single dot right here. This represents the current directory that you're in. So if I run cd dot, of course it'll change directory to my current directory which I'm already in, so it doesn't make sense. But it's um. It's very useful, for example, if I want to copy something that's all the way over in Drive Videos, My Videos, and I just want to copy, uh, let's copy this video. If I want to copy it to my current directory, I can just do period, and it'll go ahead and copy it over here. So that's pretty nice. Um, and I think that's everything that I need to cover. Um, of course, there's a lot more to using the shell. It's very extensible, very um, useful. This is just this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to things you can do uh, in a shell. But this is the basic. This is just the bare basics for people who aren't familiar with it or 
need to find a way to navigate around or do certain tasks. Um, and like I said, if you're ever in, if you're ever in trouble or you need, um, or you need to consult help, um, you can just run man and whatever command you want to run. Or sometimes, sometimes uh, some commands will actually have, if you give it the dash H option, oh, oops, uh, or sorry, dash dash help, uh, it'll actually spit out a little help page for you. Um, not all commands do this though. I would definitely stick with using the man command for most things. Uh, like for, for like things like CD or um, maybe not CD, but things like cat or any other commands you might be stuck with. So that's all. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, most of uh, just basics of using your shell. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys whenever.